established since June of 2010 as a coordination body against a backdrop of severe crime and violence that had been brewing for more than two decades, Restore Belize has kept its focus, diligently planning, coordinating, and collaborating, holding hands with established partners and reaching out to new partners to join in this daunting but essential task of restoring Belize to that peaceful jewel that we all once knew. One of the foundation studies that informed the Restore Belize strategic plan is the Gale Report which points out that violence is at the source of this terribly complicated dilemma. One of the primary motivations for violent confrontation is unresolved conflict. In early 2012, a loud call went out, a call requesting resources to strengthen and increase our national capacity to resolve conflicts before they escalate into violent confrontations in our schools, our homes and our streets. It was a call for assistance in conflict mediation. Whereas the call may not have reached the Victoria Peak or echoed in the Maya mountain range, it was certainly heard by our friends at the United States Embassy in Balmopan. When we um, first heard from uh, Mr. Belize's uh, uh, Mary Vasquez and uh, Audrey Wallace, they made a presentation to sort of a small donor community here. Uh, we were um, taken by the uh, focus of the request, which was um, not the usual request we get. Uh, this was more along the lines of uh, uh, smart power. Uh, so when we first heard that request, we didn't know precisely at the embassy in Belmapan, we didn't know what resources we had at our disposal. Uh, so we quickly went to work. Uh, we huddled uh, at the embassy, uh, contacted our uh, counterparts in Washington, D.C., had a couple of phone calls, uh, conference calls, and we included, um, subsequently we included uh, Mary Vasquez and uh, uh, Audrey Wallace uh, in, in uh, the conference calls. The Belmapan embassy contacted Conflict Stabilization and Operations, which is the organization I work in. At that time, they were looking for uh, gang mediation help because they felt that there was, um, they only had a couple of people doing the mediation with the gang truce and they wanted some extra support there. We agreed to come in and we all collaborated in the plan that we put forth, which was training, mediation, and conflict resolution training, and then to provide uh, mediation mentoring after the folks went through the training class. Once we realized what the plan would be, then we wanted the right personnel. Dr. Cynthia Ermer is a member of the CSO team and holds a doctorate in conflict mediation with a strong instructional background. She was directly involved in putting together the training plan for Belize's engagement. Conflict stabilization has a group of specialized persons, CSRs, who are allowed to go to special places in the world with mediation expertise. That is where they found Calvin Wilson. He provides consultancy to the Department of Justice and is well experienced in working with gangs within the prison system, community outreach, as well as rehabilitation. CSO then needed a person who was a really strong instructor. They found Stephen Tom at the Department of Justice's Community Resource Services Group, and he brings a wealth of experience in instruction, having mediated through some of the Los Angeles riots. He too has a strong background in mediation. Then we had to look at who we were going to provide the training to. So we wanted to get a, uh, a good um, breadth of the community, and with Restore Belize giving us uh, guidance and us working together, we came up with a good group of students who are um, from a very diverse group of the Belize community. Restore Belize reached out to key partners to choose a group of persons who would become trained mediators. These persons included representations from youth service providers, CYDP, high school counselors, the central prison, Youth for the Future, Community Policing Unit, Community Rehab Department, NGOs, Youth Hostel, Community Activists, and the Youth Cadet Corps. 
and therefore it is not limited to gangs or the streets. So we obviously then invited these people to come to a one week, 40 hour training. Um, in order to complete the process, they then had to do three co-mediation with um, the experts from the, um, from the US. Upon completing those mediation, then obviously they, they became trained mediators. When we were finished with the trainings, we then went back to the list and we looked at it carefully and we tried to decide who would be the important people for us to train as trainers from that list. And we were, we were looking at things that they would be able to sustain further trainings within their own individual agencies, within their communities, and so forth. So we did the selection based on individuals we felt that would be able to continue to train in their agencies and in their communities. We've never had any formal training in, in that, even though um, CYDP have a lot of BDF police officers, civilian, counselor trained persons. Um, we don't have persons specifically in mediation and what it needs uh, to work with the gangs on the ground is a different type of skill than in a counselor room. It's working with persons in more aggressive um, situations and so it was very important that um, we be a part of, of that training. Gwen Liz, it's, it's a typical high school and we're working with young people from basically all areas of, of Obelisan society. They come not only with their family identity, but they come also with their, their area or their turf identity. Um, they are just typical high school students, typical teenagers, you know, um, and working through that development in ways that, you know, they need the kind of guidance that they need. The whole mediation process is about problem solving. It's about you as a mediator being able to be an objective third party in diffusing a, something that could become violent or just mediating a conflict. That's when you come in you be objective and you listen to both parties side of the story and try to help them find a common ground in solving their problems. Uh, the three skills that we think of in terms of mediation are communication skills, listening, active listening, two, inquiry, which is probing, and three, uh, facilitating in terms of managing and facilitating the mediation process. One of them and one of the key um, skills is active listening. Active listening allows someone to look at each other, you, um, you listen. What a lot of people do when we're talking or conversing is we're not really listening. We're listening, but we're also developing what we want to say. So we've only half listened to what the person said. So active listening forces you to just listen, to really concentrate on what the person is saying, look them in the eye, nod so the, or say a few things to, so they know that you're listening and then you say it back to the person when they're done. So you cannot be worrying about what you're going to say. You have to be listening to be able to say back to them, so I heard that you said this, this, and this. And in doing that, you get a deeper understanding of what the person is saying and what they're feeling and the person feels they've been heard. Um, I think one of the biggest things that was stressed to us um, when we were being trained and when we were trained to become a trainer was the aspect that if we constantly touch these conflicts on a surface level and not get to the real root, cross, root causes and the interests of these individuals, we'll be back at the table again. So we draw a tree in the mediation all the time. We say, here's the fight at the top, and there are feelings in, in the, in, that are hurt in that process, and then there are causes in that process, and then there are root causes in that process, and really the party has a, per, a particular interest that he wants to accomplish to solve the problem. And so our probing goes down all those different elements. We ask questions to get the facts and the information of what the problem is about. We ask questions to probe and analyze why that problem exists and what they did with it and what occurred. And then we ask questions to get the feelings and, and, and to try to get the parties to understand that there were feelings involved and there's hurt involved and there's pain involved so that then they could move down into some of the causes. And then they kind of touch on some light causes. But we know that behind every 
every cause of a conflict, there is really deeper uh, reasons for that. And we want to ask the right kind of questions. And so when you're uh, dealing with the top, you're asking what, and you're asking what happened and where. And then when you get down to the feelings, you say, how do you feel? And how did you, how did you feel when, when somebody did something to you? How did you react? Were there some things that, uh, that bothered you in particular? And we get down to the feelings, and then we go into, well, what do you think was the cause of that? You know? And then we say, well, what do you really think uh, caused you to, to uh, react the way you did? And then we start asking the why questions. And the why questions begin to get into the real causes. And then when we feel that we've got the real cause, and we begin to hear the interest, then we start saying, well, what, what, would, what would you like to see happen as a result of this mediation? Where do, you, where do you want to go? What do you want to come out of this with? And that's when we turn it around to looking at the solutions. Um, I think overall it was an amazing experience, and I'm excited at the ways forward we move with it because I think we have built our capacity within these agencies for trained mediators and to see how we move forward as trained mediators, whether it's to train more mediators, whether it's to form an association and be the uh, dependable body once a conflict arises, that's where they can go to, um, will be interesting. Now that um, I have been trained um, in mediation, um, and the fact that I find it very beneficial, I feel that it is important that other persons um, get this skill. Uh, there is no way that one man or, or, or two men can do this job that we need in Belize. There's a lot of persons who need to be trained and I think um, I would like to pass that skill along, to pass that training around, to even continue to strengthen my own skills um, because it's always a learning process. This, this is very important to our society and it is not one of those things that you can have and just take it and sit on it. It is the way to me and the way the training was brought forward. You can't just sit and have all these mediation skills and be around people, you know, people conflict every day and not be there to assist them with the kind of skill that you have. So it's not one of those things that I will be sitting and um, on and not making use of. I am really fired up and ready to go. I had about five or six different instances where I was a mediator. And the experience was, the first one was very tiring. It's, it's, it's like emotionally and mentally draining in that you're at the table and you're trying to pull these people to come together so that we can solve this problem. But after you've done about three or four, you kind of get the whole feel of mediation in that you're going to put your own personality in the process and try to get the parties to become more comfortable with you so that you can come to a final solution. Having completed three training courses and one intense train the trainer session, and as 36 trained conflict mediators return to their respective communities and our representatives from conflict stabilization operations return to their home after two months of diligent work but with a strong commitment to continue providing technical support to Belizean mediators. We got a good core of 40 mediators and we have a peer mediation program starting to get to the younger generations. So in that way, my dream is maybe over five years that you can see the benefits of how many problems that have been resolved and how people are going to start solving problems earlier and how you diffuse the kind of violence that exists. This conflict mediation training has highlighted several important issues related to conflict resolutions. First, conflict is inevitable and therefore is not limited to gangs or streets. It is an integral part of engagement and life. It is present in homes, schools, and in the workplace. As we continue as one community in our journey towards peace, we look to each other in full acknowledgement that there are things that make us different, but that there are even more that will unite us as one believes.